Anita Corso was born November 3, 1933. She was born in Hutchinson, Kansas, and studied drama at Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois. She decided to abandon her studies soon before graduating and instead left for New York to pursue a career in entertainment. Anita's screen debut came in 1955 in an episode of the anthology TV series Producers Showcase. A few years later, she could be seen in the prominent 1958 sci-fi horror The Blob. From there, it was a quick upward trajectory for the burgeoning actress. Soon, she was given a role on the already established sitcom The Andy Griffith Show. The Andy Griffith Show was a titular vehicle for its star, Andy Griffith, who played Andy Taylor. Anita was brought onto the show during its third season. She was given the role of a school teacher that Andy develops an attraction to. Soon, their characters were written into a romantic relationship. However, this relationship soon transcended the boundaries of the small screen and entered the realities of these two actors. Anita was neither Andy's first love interest on the show nor his only love interest in real life. Andy had been married for over 15 years at the time he began his affair with Anita and had several children with his current wife. Despite this setback, Andy couldn't help himself from pursuing his new co-star romantically. The two eventually entered into an affair, but had a hard time keeping it a secret from their co-workers. Many of the cast and crew members became aware of Andy and Anita's adulterous romance. One time, they played a prank involving a young assistant. The crew had found out when and where Andy and Anita were going to meet up, and sent the assistant there dressed as a waiter to deliver a romantic meal. Unsurprisingly, Andy was not pleased. Though their romance started out as an extramarital affair, Andy started developing grander intentions for the two of them. He proposed to Anita no less than three times over the course of their romance, but she turned him down each time. Even though their relationship never quite had the happy ending Andy wanted, the two remained close until Anita's death in 1995. Andy worked with her again a couple times and they always remained friends. The reason Anita declined his hand in marriage all those times is unclear but fans have speculated it was because she didn't want to be seen as the other woman who tore Andy's family apart. Anita never got involved in a marriage of her own, although she and Andy did end up getting married on the small screen. Their characters on The Andy Griffith Show ended up marrying in the show's spin-off series, Mayberry RFD. As school teacher Helen Crump, Anita brought a unique charm to The Andy Griffith Show that fans loved. This is perhaps why the show's staff eventually decided to marry the two off on the show's spinoff. As compared to Andy's previous love interests on the show, Anita was proper and pure, warming the hearts of TV audiences. After the Andy Griffith Show and Mayberry RFD, Anita and Andy worked together on a number of other programs over the years. She reprised the role of Helen Crump on two separate occasions, once in 1986's Return to Mayberry, and again in 1993's The Andy Griffith Show Reunion. On each occasion, she appeared alongside Andy Griffith. She also appeared alongside Andy in a few episodes of his hit 1980s drama, Matlock, where Andy played the titular character, Ben Matlock. Anita appeared as three characters during the show's run, including recurring character Judge Cynthia Justin. Even if Anita never wanted to marry him, Andy was always looking for ways to get his former love back on the screen. Anita made her final appearance as Judge Cynthia Justin in 1992, the same year Matlock came to an end. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already, and stick around to find out how Anita's life was cut tragically short. Anita Corso passed away from cancer in 1995. Her last appearances were in Matlock and the Andy Griffith Show reunion. She left behind no children. However, she certainly left behind an impressive legacy and an empty place in the heart of her longtime co-star and romantic partner, Andy Griffith. Andy Griffith wasn't the only star that Anita appeared alongside during her career. In The Blob, she starred with Hollywood legend Steve McQueen. The film was his screen debut as well. According to legend, the two were dating in real life when they secured their roles in the film. The two played lovers in the film almost a decade before Anita was brought onto The Andy Griffith Show. Anita also appeared alongside another Hollywood legend before appearing on The Andy Griffith Show, Marion Ross. They each landed a recurring role on The Gertrude Berg Show around the same time. They both made their debut on that show during the same episode in 1961. There were a number of coincidences involved in Anita's casting on The Andy Griffith Show. For one thing, both her and her character on that show came from the state of Kansas. 
Secondly, she shared a birthday with one of the show's established cast members, Ken Berry. Not only were they born the same day, but also the same year. The last coincidence only came about after the show, but it's still notable. In a couple of 1975 episodes of the police drama Adam-12, Anita could be seen as the new girlfriend of character Pete Malloy. Pete Malloy was a police officer, just like Andy Taylor. In one strange incident, Anita campaigned to have a minor character on the Andy Griffith show named after a friend of hers as a small personal tribute. According to Anita, she approached one of the show's writers about it, a man named Jim Fritzell. Her friend's name was Phil Sunkel, and Anita wanted to give the name to a small character in the episode The Mayberry Band. Despite her good intentions, the incident didn't turn out so great for the show. Phil was depicted as a jazz musician, which was his career in real life. Apparently, after the episode aired, he felt it tainted his career. Because of this, he sued The Andy Griffith Show for $20,000. When adjusted for inflation, that's about $180,000 today. Given it was a fairly clear-cut case, Phil won and was awarded the sum. However, the production staff reportedly didn't hold a grudge against Anita for the incident. Anita also worked moderately after her tenure as Helen Crump. She was notably featured in the 1974 Mel Brooks comedy Blazing Saddles, and she was given a regular role in a medical sitcom known as House Calls in 1980. She co-starred alongside another former sitcom star trying to retain their status in the spotlight, Mash's Wayne Rogers. In House Calls, Anita played the role of head nurse Bradley. The show was a minor success and lasted three seasons, finally ending in September of 1983. After that, Anita had only two minor one-off appearances before appearing alongside Andy once again via her first role in his 1986 drama, Matlock. Anita did some work outside of film and TV as well, crafting a compendium of quizzes for lovers of mystery books alongside both children's writer Muff Singer and fellow actor Robert Wagner. This book was called The Mystery Reader's Quiz Book and required the reader to answer numerous trivia questions about beloved mystery novels and stories. By all accounts, she was always a multi-talented and independent woman with many unique interests. Andy divorced from his first wife in 1972 and married two more times over the course of his life. But none of his brides held a candle in his mind to Anita. Andy passed away 17 years after her in 2012. Since then, many more viewers have been introduced to The Andy Griffith Show. Every time, those viewers will always become interested in finding out more about the secret relationship between Andy and his eventual on-screen wife. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite Helen Crump moment from the show? Or if you think Anita deserved to get more large starring roles. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.